Why are metals so peculiar? Metals are a class of physical substances that exhibit a range of highly distinctive and recognizable properties. Even without any knowledge of chemistry, one can easily distinguish metals from non-metals by their luster, ability to conduct electricity, high thermal conductivity, and malleability, meaning they can change shape under external forces without breaking. All these properties of metals are a result of one particular feature in the structure of their atoms. But before we dive into that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications by pressing that bell button. Now, let's get started. What makes metals so special? The key lies in the fact that their atoms are significantly larger than the atoms of comparable non-metals listed in periodic table of elements. For instance, consider argon, which has an atomic number of 18 and an atomic radius of 70 picometers. In contrast, the next element, potassium, with an atomic number of 19, has an atomic radius of 280 picometers. The metal germanium, with an atomic number of 32, has an atomic radius of 211 picometers, whereas its non-metal neighbor arsenic has an atomic radius of 185 picometers. It's worth noting that in the latter case, the difference in atom sizes is not very significant, and arsenic occupies an intermediate position between metals and non-metals, often referred to as metalloids. The larger the atom, the further its electrons are from the nucleus. The electric force between the electrons and the nucleus is directly proportional to the atom's charge and inversely proportional to the square of the atom's size. In other words, in larger atoms, electrons are weakly bound to the nucleus compared to chemical elements with smaller atoms that are positioned nearby in the periodic table. In metals with their large atoms, this bond becomes so weak that the electron's attraction to the nucleus is comparable to its attraction to the nuclei of neighboring atoms, effectively balancing it out. Essentially, the electron becomes free from the electrical attraction of its own atom and goes into what we call free electron motion. More precisely, each specific valence electron in a metal is bound not to just one atom but to all the surrounding atoms simultaneously, allowing it to move relatively freely within the material. On the other hand, each specific atom is bonded not just to its own valence electrons but also to numerous valence electrons of neighboring atoms. This unique arrangement forms a distinct crystalline lattice, aptly named the metallic lattice. While in other types of substances, atoms, molecules, or charged ions are connected through various types of bonds, here each atom interacts with its surrounding sea of freely moving electrons that have escaped their respective atoms. It's somewhat similar to the structure of liquid concrete or other substances where individual solid particles are bonded together by the fluid filling the gaps. However, the free electrons in metals behave more like a gas than a liquid, meaning that the energy of their interactions with one another is much smaller compared to the kinetic energy of each individual electron. We can also disregard the electrical interactions with the lattice ions since the ions on opposite sides of an electron cancel out each other's influence. Thanks to this arrangement, the multitude of free electrons effectively behaves like a gas. Physicists refer to this state as an electron gas. It is precisely this internal structure of metals that accounts for all their extraordinary physical properties. Electrical conductivity, for instance, is straightforward. Free electrons are easily influenced by an electric field, causing them to move in a directed manner, creating an electric current like an electron wind blowing through the metal. This is also why metals exhibit their characteristic metallic luster, reflecting almost all the incident light upon them. Light, as an electromagnetic wave, propagates through space as oscillations in electric and magnetic fields. Consequently, when a light wave strikes a piece of metal, a variable electromagnetic field forms at the point of impact. Under the influence of this field, electrons begin to oscillate in sync with the wave. The energy of the wave is consumed by their oscillations, meaning the wave hardly penetrates deep into the metal. On the other hand, oscillating electrons, like any charged particles moving with variable speed, emit electromagnetic waves themselves. Essentially, the electron gas absorbs the energy of the incident wave and immediately re-emits it back in the same form, a reverse traveling electromagnetic wave. The higher the concentration of electrons in the electron gas, the more efficient this process becomes. For example, silver, which boasts the highest concentration of free electrons, making it the best conductor with minimal electrical resistance, can achieve reflectivity of up to 95%. Most metals reflect electromagnetic waves in the visible light spectrum almost without distortion, which gives them their characteristic silvery luster. The electron gas is also responsible for metals' high thermal conductivity. If we heat a region of non-metal, thermal energy will propagate, transferring from one atom or molecule to another within the crystal lattice, relatively slowly. In metals, however, the heated electrons travel within the substance, carrying this energy and gradually transferring it to the surroundings. This process is more like convection than mere heat exchange, and as we know, convection provides much higher efficiency in heat transfer. The unique structure of a metal's crystalline lattice also accounts for its mechanical properties, such as malleability. The atoms, more accurately, ions, in a metal lattice aren't rigidly bonded like in non-metals, they seem to float in the surrounding electron gas, which, like any gas, is relatively easily deformed. Here again, the analogy with liquid concrete or sand soaked in water comes into play. 
This lattice structure also enables metals to form alloys with drastically different properties compared to their individual components. For example, an alloy of tin, lead, bismuth, and cadmium has a melting point around 60 degrees Celsius, whereas the lightest component of the mixture, tin, melts at 232 degrees Celsius. This is because the atoms in metals interact with each other through the interaction of each with the same cloud of electron gas. In a way, you can say that the ions in the crystalline lattice are dissolved in the electron gas, allowing different metals to mix as easily as different substances dissolved in the same liquid. As you can see, this one unique feature of metals, weakly bound outer electrons to the atomic nucleus, provides this class of substances with a multitude of remarkable properties that sharply distinguish them from non-metals. Stay tuned for the next part of our exploration into the fascinating world of physics. Don't forget to like and share this video if you found it enlightening, and remember to subscribe to our channel for more captivating scientific content. See you next time.